it's Marcus here. And today I'm going to talk to you about IB predicted grades. So this is the starter video in a series where I'm going to tell you all about how to really maximize your IB predicted grades. Um, just a quick disclaimer, this isn't only specific for the IB. This can also be applied to any other system which uses predicted grades, such as the A-levels, for example. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five main points regarding the predicted grades. Firstly, what are the predicted grades? Then how are the predicted grades calculated? I'm going to talk about my predicted grades. Then I'm going to go on to what I aim to do in this YouTube series. And then finally, how fair these predicted grades are uh, compared to any other system. So let's start off with what are the predicted grades? So predicted grades are basically grades given by your teachers, which are used then in UCAS or for your university application and are sent off to universities so that universities have a sort of idea of where you are at academically. And then they can use this to make their decision about whether to accept you into their university or not. In my opinion, predicted grades can actually be sometimes more important than the real grades because sometimes universities give offers which are far lower than the predicted grades you have. So your real exams sometimes are much easier to attain the grades that you need. Additionally, predicted grades allow the university to actually make you the offer. So without good predicted grades, universities won't be willing to give you an offer. And without an offer, your path to university is already cut off. So for that reason, I feel like the predicted grades sometimes are even more important than the real exams. Now moving on to how the predicted grades are calculated. Basically, this can vary immensely depending on your teachers, your school, where you live, and a million other factors which make the predicted grades pretty subjective. This being said, often teachers use a formula to make sure that the variations between students um, isn't subjective and so that they can provide the fairest predicted grades and the most accurate uh, representations of the actual students' abilities. So what I've seen some teachers do is they combine the tests grades throughout the whole of the first year with the final exam grade that you do at the end of your first year of the IB, which is an internal exam, that, which is sort of the end of year exams. And so combining these 50-50 allows the teachers to really figure out how consistent you are along the years, which is the, your average for your test grades, as well as how you perform on exams and under exam conditions. So how you perform when you have to learn everything at once, which is a more accurate representation of how the IB exams will actually go. Now, this isn't the same for all teachers, and many teachers just go on a sort of how they feel you are doing. So for example, my English teacher last year, he wasn't really sure what grade to give me, so he decided to give me a six based on sort of the work I had done previously, but this wasn't based on any formula or any defined statistic that I had shown. Additionally, this can vary with subjects which use um, labs, such as physics or chemistry or biology, where what I've seen, for example, my chemistry and biology teachers do, is they combine 40% of tests grades and 40% of the exam grades. And then they give 20% weighting to all of the sort of lab reports and practical write-ups that you've had to do over the year. So for chemistry, I think I did around 10 write-ups which all counted for 20% of my final predicted grades. Now I'm going to talk about my predicted grades. So for the IB, I was predicted 44 points in total, where I have chemistry, biology, and economics, higher level, which are all at a 7. Um, I have maths and Spanish B at standard level, which are also 7. And then I have English literature, which is at a 6. Um, then I have TOK and my extended essay, which were both predicted A, so that gave me three points. And that gives me a total of 44 points. However, this wasn't always the case. So before the second year of the IB, I was doing higher maths as well, so I had four hires. And for higher maths, I would have been predicted a six, meaning that I would have 43 points overall. However, over the summer of between the first and second year of the IB, I decided that since higher maths wasn't necessary for my course, and since I had just the same likelihood of getting in with standard maths as I did with higher maths, then I decided to drop to standard maths and continue only with three hires, and that gave me the seven in standard maths rather than the six in higher maths. So in this case, my predicted grade in standard maths was only based on an exam I did that the teacher gave me, which 
I got a 7. So I think the most important thing that I did to really ensure that I achieved these predicted grades was make sure that I had complete consistency throughout all of my subjects over the whole of the first and part of the second year of the IB. And in doing this, in completely spreading my time um, equitably between the subjects, I made sure that I wasn't overperforming in some and underperforming in others, so that I would really maximize my final grade. So to give you an example, I have friends who really fluctuated between grades in some subjects. So for example, they would get a really high seven in one test, and then they would get maybe a low five in the next test. And what this did, it didn't give the teacher confidence that they would be able to achieve that seven, for example, at the end of the year. And I have examples where they were predicted sixes, even though they were perfectly capable of achieving sevens. However, they kept fluctuating and so weren't able to achieve that predicted grade. So the basis in strategy that causes these sort of fluctuations in grade is when people say, okay, I'm gonna study really hard for this test and they get a high seven. And then the next test they think, okay, I already have that high seven um, and I have other stuff to do. So I'll focus on the other stuff and I won't study as much for this next upcoming test. And what this does is they get a much lower grade. And then when they get this much lower grade, they realize, oh, damn, I really need to study. So then they focus loads of hard work and loads of time into the following test so they can achieve a higher grade. And what this does is it puts much more pressure and stress into really achieving the highest grade for the test that you're recovering from the previous worst grade. Additionally, it could also mean that they overstudied for some of the tests where they could have spent time doing something better, such as an assignment for another subject or something like that. And I think that that's where my strategy of keeping consistency and allowing all subjects to receive the fair amount of attention and time is where it really thrives because I can sort of make sure that I'm consistent throughout the whole of the grades so that teachers are really confident in predicting me the grades that I want. So what I aim to do with this YouTube series is to really show you how I achieved these predicted grades in each individual subject and show you the strategies and really the details you can use to really maximize your grades because the predicted grades are something that you can sort of work your way around and make sure that you have the best predicted grade for you and make sure that you can really maximize your chances of getting into the university you want and I feel like that's what I want to share with you I really want to show you how these predicted grades can really be put to the top of there so for that reason I would consider subscribing to keep you updated about the specific subjects that you may want or any specific tips that you may need and I feel like this will really provide you with some value. So you might be asking me, what about the subjects that I haven't done? Well, I plan to talk to some of my friends um, who have done other subjects such as art and film and, and business maybe, and maybe get their insights and maybe even do a sort of interactive session where I have a conversation with them about their predicted grades in those specific areas so that all the bases are covered. So finally, I wanted to give my opinion on how fair are the predicted grades. So there's quite a lot of debate about whether the predicted grades are really a good way of allowing universities to decide whether they want you or not. And that's why many universities have adopted lots of different techniques such as using the DMAT or UCAT or just their own admissions exams to sort of evaluate your academic performance. This being said, the predicted grades are still highly influential in your, in your university admissions. So are they really that fair? So the predicted grades do favor a certain type of student. They favor the sort of student who is always active in classes, who is always on time with his homework, who is always putting the best efforts towards his tests and his final end of year exams. This is in great contrast to the sort of system like the Portuguese system, which I'm also doing, where you just do a one exam at the end of the year and that's it. And that's the grade that you will use to then be accepted into university. And that favors a different sort of student, a student who is really good at studying for one thing and really, really good at focusing just on one thing and the rest of the year they can just do whatever basically. <laughs> However, the Portuguese system only allows for one average grade to be used to then get into university and then they rank the students and then there's a cutoff. Um, so only students which have above 70% can get in and then that's it. So the good thing about the predicted grades is that they allow for other components to be incorporated into the decision of universities 
for when they decide to accept you or not into their university. So for example, the personal statements that they use, I think is really important. And then the different interviews maybe, or exams that the universities ask for, they can be added to the predicted grade to sort of add a holistic impression of the student academically and personally. And so therefore I do feel like the predicted grade system is quite a fair system, despite there being lots of subjectivity and often quite a lot of overprediction in certain schools and certain areas. Putting all that aside, the predicted grades, I feel, are still completely in your hands since you can put in the work and you can make sure that you really maximize the grades of the different components that go into the predicted grades, such as um, your tests and your practical write-ups and all of that stuff. And if you really do that, then your teacher will have no choice but to predict you the grade that you deserve. So for that reason, I would highly advise to continue following throughout this whole series and subscribing so that you really are updated with everything that comes out and the different techniques that you will need to really get the best out of your predicted grades and make sure that you get into that university that you want to get into. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.